Warning, this episode contains discussions on mental health issues, potential violence, and other sensitive topics that may be distressing or triggering to some listeners. Please exercise personal discretion when listening. If you or someone you know is struggling, we encourage seeking professional support. Coming up on this episode of Unholy Vibes. She starts telling me about how she thinks that she's being punished. And she's like, I think that I'm just on this current cycle of punishment because I killed this woman's baby. And I'm like, what? Well, did you? And she's like, I don't remember, but I'll have dreams that I'm throwing something against the wall and I think it's a pillow and then it starts crying. Welcome to Unholy Vibes, a journey through the realms of true horror. Please note, while this is not a religious podcast, the narratives shared by our guests often intertwine with their personal faiths and beliefs. Our aim is to respectfully present these stories in their authentic form, which sometimes includes religious elements essential for context and understanding. We embrace guests from diverse spiritual backgrounds, recognizing that these beliefs can significantly shape their experiences. Thank you for joining us, and let's delve into the unexplained with an open mind and respect for all perspectives. Welcome to the Unholy Vibes podcast. I am your host, Alex, and today we have another very special guest. Hello. Maddie, please introduce yourself. Okay. Alex and I go way back. I am Alex's first friend. First and only. <laughs> first and only. No, when did we meet? Like junior high? We met in 2010. We were just such good friends. It feels like it's been longer than that. We've been through all phases of life together, haven't we? We are tight. <laughs> we are tight. We are tight. I am his son's godmother also. Yep. Gotta leave that in there. <laughs> yeah, this is my son's godmother. Anyways, we go way back. Alex taught me how to play zombies. He taught me how to play Mortal Kombat. We played a lot of Mortal Kombat. Anyway, we know. got, well, point of the story, we played so much. We got really good and we put in some hours. Long story short, that's how we bonded. We became such good friends. Yes. Because of high school and video games. Yes, all good things. And we kept in contact even when we were not living in the same state. And Maddie was living quite the life. And I say that and like, you just had a lot of things happen. Things happen to me that happen to no one else yeah. all the time. And I would just be like, what's the tea, dude? Give me the, give me, give me <laughs> to this week's story. There was always something crazy happening. And you had been texting me or Snapchatting me about a new roommate. That's where all this story begins. So I'm going to let Maddie take this away. Maddie, tell us the story. Give us all the background. Spare no detail. And yeah, let's let's hear about the roommate. The roommate. Okay, here we go. I'm living in this apartment complex and I had last minute moved in there. There was some things that switched up in my housing. I was almost finished with school and I was going to be moving out of state. So I just need somewhere quick. There's this apartment complex and I remember it was like, oh, sign with us, get your first month free and get some AirPods. And I was like, say less. Like, pretty good deal. Say less. Did no research. Turned out that it was a pretty actually sketchy apartment complex. There was a shooting in the parking garage like a Standard. couple of days before I moved in. Anyways, just to set the background, the apartment complex, it's not janky by any means. It was a newer complex, but it was just not an ideal environment. As it was far student as, housing. Uh, it yeah, was, it was, it was, it was student students. housing, but then there were also 40-year-old dudes living there. It was just crazy. <laughs> I think they just needed renters so bad that they were foregoing the credit checks, just move in, we'll give you a free thing of AirPods. Yeah. So that should have been my first flag, although I did meet some actually great people there. I met some of my greatest friends. Anyways. And these are mistakes <laughs> you make when you're 22 yeah. years old or 20. Yeah. Oh, I was like 25. <laughs> Anyways. So the apartment that I live in, there's four bedrooms and they're all private bedrooms, four bedrooms, two baths. So I move all my stuff in. It's a little bit janky, but whatever. It's fairly new. It's clean. And I, it, it's close to my work and school. But when I first moved in, although all, all four rooms were filled, one girl lived with her boyfriend or something. So she wasn't ever really there. So for like the first three months that I lived there, it was fine. It was super chill. My cousin ended up moving in in one of the bedrooms. Some girl moved out. So there were still the four rooms, but three occupied. One girl paid rent, but didn't actually live there. That's so, right. I remember you telling me about that. She yeah. was at her boyfriend's or something half the time. Yeah, that's how this whole thing happened. <clears throat> Otherwise, you know, because there was a leasing office you had to go through. Anyways, so one day I'm sitting at home and it's probably like 6 p.m. I've lived there for like three or four months. And there's like little fob keys to open the door. Mm -hmm. But it like starts shaking. Like you can tell like someone's trying to open it and then they can't. And I'm like, what the heck? So I'm going and I look through the peephole and I don't see anybody. But like, the door is shaking and I look down and I can see there's someone there. And she has a bunch of bags. I'm like, oh, weird. So I open the door 
And I'm like, hi. And she's like, do you live here? Just like looks me dead in the eyes. And I was like, um, yeah. And she's like, me too. And just like, pushes through me. And I've never seen this girl before in my life. So do you live here? Yes, me too. And she just barges <laughs> it. barges right past me. And I'm like, girl, you sure? I've never seen you before. Anyway, I'm stunned. And so I step aside. She walks in and then walks into the back room where the girl who lived there but was like living with her boyfriend step was and i'm like uh but she had the key to the door because the door was locked her bedroom door was locked she had the key to the door and then goes in and i'm like okay so turns out the girl's room it was who has the boyfriend somehow met this girl that was just walking in and she offered to pay rent or something and she was like oh yeah super sick i don't even know how they met i really don't it's <laughs> the whole thing it's just so crazy how it came to pass but very suspect from the beginning from the very beginning something was off anyways so she had just pawned her contract off essentially to this girl but not through the leasing office or anything just, which is like hey here's the online portal because if everything was online she's like here's the link just go pay it every month so i have a ro- new roommate now all four rooms are filled and for the sake of the story new roommate's name is nicole so nicole moves all her stuff in and she doesn't really have much. And she's very keep to herself. She just barges in, puts her stuff in the room, closes the door. And when you're living in a community apartment, you just kind of do that, whatever. I end up going to a friend's house for the night, come back. And the next morning, my other roommate, Anna, who is awesome, I love her. She's like, hey, did someone move in yesterday? And I was like, I think so. Someone went in that room. She had a key. I guess she's just in now. And she's like, oh, okay, that's weird, whatever. So it takes a couple days for me to be home at the same time as Nicole, this new girl. But the first time I start actually talking to her is when we're in the living room. And she's asking me what I'm up to, what I do, and pretty normal conversation. And then she's asking me how I get to know all the people that I know. And I'm like, oh, I met people around the apartment complex, school and stuff. And she's like, oh, yeah, cool. We start talking a little bit. And she said that she just moved from Kansas because she said my adoptive parents didn't want me around anymore so as soon as I turned 18 they kicked me out and I was like oh my gosh that's so sad <laughs> she was just saying she got adopted by this family as soon as she turned 18 they like kicked her out because they didn't like her yeah. and I was like dang that's tough <laughs> welcome I guess I'm giving her the lowdown and then I find out she doesn't have a car so I actually t- took her to the grocery store I took her to Walmart to get groceries and we're talking and she's a little bit odd I can tell something's definitely different about her but I'm like dang this girl's like just coming from a lot like it's probably tough giving her the benefit of the doubt she was a little off then things started to get a little weird the first thing that was weird was one day I came home and all my food was gone out of the fridge (laughs) on my shelf specifically and I'm like that's so weird and then Nicole comes out of her room and she's like hey do you have cash app and I was like what she's like do you have cash app I ate your food I was gonna cash app you for it And I'm like, girl, you ate all my food off my shelf in the fridge. That's wild. Anyway, I'm like, oh, like, how do you even react to that situation? I'm like, oh, it's cool. Like, I had just taken her to buy groceries. (laughs) So she's like, ate all your food. What's your cash app? So I set up a cash app account just so that she could pay me. And she pays me like 30 bucks. And it comes from a different name. So the name on the cash app was different than Nicole. And I was like, oh, weird, whatever, though, like, maybe it's just like, uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking, but it just didn't, it didn't faze me. Looking back, there were a lot of signs, but in the moment, I was giving her the benefit of the doubt. So then stuff really gets weird. She never left the house or her room, and she would be in her room all day until me and my roommates went to bed at night, and then she would come out, and she would watch YouTube videos in the living room, full volume, probably 75, 80 volume. In the middle of the night. So all of us would wake up. And at first I just started going out and being like, hey, Nicole, can you turn it down a little bit? Just trying to be courteous. And she would, but she would just look at me. By middle of the night, are you talking midnight, two, three? Well, okay. No, I'm talking like maybe one, one, two p.m. So not like crazy for someone to be awake. Right? A.m. A.m. <laughs> Sorry. Like, you know, like, you know, one or two no. a.m. No. So That's yeah. still, if, if your three roommates are sleeping. We, we were all definitely sleeping. We had jobs and yeah. stuff. You should have the self-awareness to not play videos at full volume at 2 a.m. Yeah, but she didn't. So it started out that way. She would turn it down and it was fine, but it would be kind of weird. A couple of days would go by and I wouldn't really see her. I don't know what she was doing. I think she was just home this whole time now, but she would stay in her room. And so 
our schedules just weren't really lining up and I would only see her once every couple of days. Every interaction would get a little more odd. It would just be a little weirder and weirder. And then there was this one night, it sounds like someone's sobbing, crying really hard. And so I get up out of my room and the way the rooms were laid out, they were all, it was all in one hallway, all four rooms right next to each other in one hallway. And our bathroom, our, there were two bathrooms across the hall. So when I would come out of my room, wasn't far from the opening of her room. So I walk out to out of the bathroom because I hear, and I hear someone crying. So I'm like, what is going on? I walk out and I see Nicole's light is on. And it was probably 1.30 a.m., almost 2. And she's hysterically sobbing. And I'm nosy. <clears throat> and I hope she's okay, but I didn't know what to do. So I'm tiptoeing over in front of the door. And I'm just like, trying to listen, like, what's going on? She's crying. But then she stops crying, starts hysterically laughing, full-on cackling alone in her room. And then she starts speaking, talking to somebody. And I'm like, oh, maybe she's on the phone. Maybe she's having a conversation with someone. Who would she be talking to? It's literally 2 a.m. So I'm I'm waiting. And I'm like, maybe let me try and see if I can hear what she's saying more. And then I realize she's speaking Haitian. So I'm like, oh, well, I I can't understand what she's saying. I don't know if she's talking to anyone. I just, I sit there for a little bit longer and I don't hear anything else. Then I hear crying again. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I get closer to the door. Then I I hear her talking again. This time can tell it's English. And she's just saying, this too shall pass, this too shall pass. Literally full body chills through my body when I hear her say that. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. This too shall pass. And I can hear that. And I'm like, oh my gosh. I take a couple steps back from the door because I'm like, is she about to bust out of here? Exorcism style or something? Like it was weird. And air goes ice cold in the whole house. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I'm terrified. And um, I just walk back into my room. I shut the door. And I'm like, okay, I need to go back to bed. Pretend that didn't happen. That's the first really weird thing. Denial. Did you, so did you tell your roommates about this? Yeah. So at this point, my roommate <coughs> Anna's room was right next to hers. And so she would start making comments to me like, hey, did you hear Nicole last night? And I'd be like, yeah. And it was really bugging Anna because Anna got up at 5 a.m. to go to work every day. So she wasn't sleeping. It got to the point where it was pretty bad. And Anna's this little Georgia peach Southern attitude. And I loved her. She's from Atlanta. But Anna Anna was not a people pleaser like me. So I was always really like nervous to like confront Nicole, but Anna would just say it. So Anna one morning says to Nicole when she was in the common area kitchen, she's like, hey, Nicole, I don't know if you have a job, but I know you're home all day. I have to get up to work really early in the morning and you're really loud at night. And Nicole just like, death glares at her. And here's something interesting that happened as well. Just background story. First time I met Nicole, she had a full head of really long braids. They were really pretty. By this time, I've probably just told you about three weeks of material. Just weird interactions. Week three gets really, really weird. She's been pulling her braids out one by one. So in this meantime, we would find her braids and her hair all over the house. Randomly on the couch and stuff. It was weird. Obviously, now looking back, her mental health was declining fast she's pulling her braids out and her whole presence is just angry and dark so i avoided her whenever i could but anna walks out and confronts nicole and is like hey i have to work really early in the morning you're really loud at night something needs to change i don't want to have this conversation again and nicole just stares at her and anna's like did you hear me and nicole's just like yeah just dead glaring her in the face and Anna's like okay whatever walks back in her room a couple days go by and we notice this black spot on the ceiling above the stove it looked like someone had burned something and the ceiling just above the stove turned black Mm -hmm. Anna asks me one day she texts me and she's like hey on, on our fridge Anna had a little magnet it was a little drawing that her nephew had done for her you know and they do them in school and they'll make a little magnet out of it for the parents or something one of those So Anna's nephew had done a drawing and made it a magnet and it was on her fridge and the magnet was gone. And Anna texts me. She's like, hey, did you move my magnet all? Like she, she, I know it seems trivial, but she loved this magnet. Like it was sentimental. Yeah, very sentimental. She lived far away from her family. She always was moving it on the fridge. So I knew exactly what she was talking about. It wasn't just a random little article that nobody would have noticed. And I'm like, oh, no, I haven't seen it. And she's like, oh, weird. Okay. So Anna comes home one day from work and I'm in my room. Nicole was in the living room and Anna asked Nicole, she's like, hey, have you seen my magnet that was on the fridge? My nephew made that for me. And Nicole looks at her and she's like, yeah. And Anna's like, okay, so where is it? And Nicole goes, I burned it. Anna's like, 
what? It kept looking at me, so I burned it. At this point, Anna loses her mind. She's like, are you kidding me? You, What do you mean you burned it? And then she points to the stove. And she had burned it on our stove. That's why she literally was burning something. That's why there was this big ring of smoke above the stove. I'm surprised no one smelled that. No, I don't know. She must have done it while Anna and I were gone at work that day. And I didn't notice when I came in. So she straight up burned the magnet because she claimed that it was watching her. And there was a little drawing of a dog or something. <laughs> her nephew had done this. A child's drawing. She burned it. And Anna lost her mind. And anyway, just goes in her room and slams the door. Okay, something is not right with this girl. Something is going on here. Okay, what do I do? I feel bad. She is mentally not well. She needs help. But I don't know how to ask. I'm actually scared of her at this point. I'm not really sure I feel comfortable around her. So I don't really want to ask anything. I don't know. You're walking on eggshells. I'm walking on eggshells for sure. At this point, I'm just trying to avoid her. I'm just avoiding her at all costs because she scares me. And yeah, I live with you. I'm a, I'm very, I'm, a, I'm at my most vulnerable in this house with you. So I just keep my distance. And then it just got worse and worse. Now it would get to the point where I would come home from work and she would have been on the couch for like 12 hours just staring at the TV watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians or something. She would either watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians, this cooking channel, or gospel sermons. And they would just be on YouTube and she would just be sitting on the couch just dead staring. And then I come home from work one day and she's sitting on the couch dead staring, but the TV's not on. Nothing's on. She's just staring. And I'm like, oh my gosh, run into my room. So probably about another week and a half goes by and it becomes a regular occurrence to hear Nicole in her room making weird sounds. Right. At this point, my cousin moved out because she was like, these vibes here are awful. I don't want to be here. I'm leaving. It's not worth it. So she's still paying rent, but moves back to her parents' house because you got to get out of your contract to be able to whatever, you know. She's still paying rent, doesn't want to be there, moves out. So then it's just me and Anna and Nicole, all three of us. One day, I am in my room. It's a Saturday, so it's probably 11 a.m. I had just woken up. I was sleeping in. I'm literally not fully clothed. I'm in my room. Door opens. It's Nicole. Um, hey, everything okay? She just starts walking in my room. She's like, can we talk? And I'm like, oh my gosh. Sure. What's going on? And she just dives into a really alarming conversation. So she is like, where are we? The whole time she's talking, she's getting closer to me. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, where are we? And I was like, this is the apartment complex. She's like, what country are we in? Um, the United States. And she's like, no, we're not. And I'm like, yeah, we are. She's like, are you sure we're not in France? The lady that I talked to on the phone tells me you speak Haitian. And I'm like, I don't speak Haitian. I'm so sorry. And she's like, are you lying? And I'm like, no. Well, I, I and I speak Spanish. So I'm like, I speak Spanish. So if you maybe heard me speaking a language that wasn't English, it was probably Spanish, but I don't speak Haitian. And she's like, the, the lady that I talked to on the phone told me you did. And I'm like, I don't. I'm sorry. And she's like, oh. Okay. She's like, is this, is this real? And I'm like, what? Is what's happening real right now? And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's not okay. So at this point, I'm alarmed. I think I might get hurt. So I pull up my phone and I have this all recorded. And I start an audio message because I'm like, I might get murdered. And if I do, I want everyone to know what happened. (laughs) So I have, like, I'm just, keep in mind, I'm not fully clothed right now. I'm in my room, not fully clothed. And she's just inching her way into my room closer and closer. So I'm like, this is where I die. Start the audio recording. And I listen back to it now and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is insane. And we'll get yeah. some of those clips. I'll get some clips. For you to listen I'll to because some, some of the stuff said is upsetting. Yeah. So forgive me if I don't, I may tweak a word or two here while I'm telling about it, but you'll hear the verbatim version. She starts telling me about how she thinks that she's being punished. And she's like, I think that I'm just on this current cycle of punishment because I killed this woman's baby. And I'm like, what? Well, did you? And she's like, I don't remember, but I'll have dreams that I'm throwing something against the wall and I think it's a pillow and then it starts crying. And I'm like, so have you like ever been diagnosed with any sort of illness? Are you on medication for anything? And she's like, well, one time I went to the doctor and they told me I might be schizophrenic. So did they put you on medication? And she's like, well, then they decided I wasn't schizophrenic. They just think I'm bipolar. So I had bipolar medicine, but I stopped taking it. Okay, when's the last time you took it? 
And she's like, I don't know, a couple months ago. And I'm like, okay, would you think about going to the doctor? Maybe you should talk to somebody about this. I'm trying to keep calm. I'm like, how do I not upset her? She's getting flustered when she's talking about like this whole baby thing. And she's like, I just deserve to be punished. And I'm like, let's maybe get you someone to talk to. Have you ever gone to the doctor? And she's like, no, I don't know. And so we just start having this conversation. And then she starts just like pivoting. And we're in mid conversation. And she's like, is that your fish on the counter? I'm like, what? And she's like, in the kitchen, the fish. We don't have a fish. I'm like, Nicole, fish? She's like, yeah, the fish on the counter. And I'm like, no, we don't have a fish. That's not mine. And then she just is going off about how she is essentially in this simulation of punishment. And the woman that she talks on the phone to is punishing her as penance. And I'm like, girl, I don't think that's the case. If it is, if you really did hurt something or someone, let's talk about it so you can get it off your conscience. But not to me, but I'm like, okay. And then she starts talking about how every once in a while she'll get really big urges to hurt someone or something. And I'm like, yikes, this girl's in my bedroom. And she's like, yeah, sometimes I just really want to hurt someone. And I'm like, okay, so this is when I'm like, we can no longer be in this apartment together. Something needs to happen. I cannot live here anymore. And this whole time, Anna and I had been texting the leasing office. And when it first happened, the leasing office was like, what? You got a new roommate? What are you talking about? They didn't know, obviously, because the girl just was paying the other one under the table. So the leasing office then gets involved in it. But she's paying rent and they need rent paid. So they don't really do anything about it. Mm -hmm. They just make her sign a different lease. So she doesn't get out that way. But then things start getting weird. Anna and I keep texting, being like, hey, we don't really feel comfortable here. She's not safe. After the magnet got burned, she's a fire hazard. And the leasing office just isn't doing anything about it. And so in that conversation with her right there, I'm like, I need to call the police. So I tell her. I didn't want to, I like didn't want to be upset. I was like, well, can I call someone to yeah, come get a, you? This is a tense moment. You're trying yeah. to kind of talk her down. Yeah, I don't want to seem threatening or make her upset. No sudden movement. Yeah, it, no, literally. And you can tell by my voice in the recording, I'm like very slow. But we, we talk and she agrees to let the police come get her. So I call the police and they show up. And as soon as the police show up, obviously the leasing office starts taking it serious. So the police come and they take her to a hospital. And she consented to go. She was like, yeah, I'll go. So that's why they were allowed to take her. That will be important later. So the police take her to the hospital. And then a couple of days go by and I don't see her. Oh, maybe she's institutionalized. That might be good for her. So then I get a call from the hospital three days later and they're like, hey, are you Maddie? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you're the only name we have on contact as far as information with this girl. Her name is Nicole. She won't speak to us and she's having manic fits and getting violent. And we don't have any information. She won't tell us where she lives. She won't tell us who she is. Um, we just knew we got from the police that you were the number that called them. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm her roommate. Honestly, I don't really know anything about her. Um, and they're like, well, it, does she have anything in her room, any records with the name, any family members, phone number, anything? And I'm like, I don't know. Her door is locked. I don't know if they had the authority to tell me this, but I did. And they're like, you need to open it. Get the door open however you can. So I like break in with this credit card, essentially. So I go in. I open her door and alarming sight. There's almost nothing in her room. Keep in mind, she's probably lived here like a month at this point, a month and a half, maybe. Absolutely nothing. No sheets on the bed. There's a couple grocery bags of clothes and then a random filing cabinet, but not. It's just like a folder with a bunch of tabs. And I'm like, what on earth? This is weird. It's just like a little plastic mattress and then the floor and then some bags of stuff in the papers. So I go over and I look at the papers because I'm looking for a name, phone number or something. And I see a bunch of court documents, but the name is different on the court documents. It's not her Nicole I don't see Nicole anywhere it's a different name and then I find a bunch of prescription bottles in her drawer all in different names four prescription bottles all Jeez. in different names Jeez. and I'm like who which one are you were you stealing someone's medication what is going on a lot of them were pain pills and then some of them were ADHD medicine but all in different people's names so I'm trying to tell the hospital I see a bunch of things here's all the names I see on all this stuff there's no phone numbers but then I find Kansas City. She had gotten into school at one of the big Kansas schools. Pretty good school. She had gotten in. And they were like, hey, are you going to register for classes again? So I'm like, okay, so she did come from Kansas. But she was a student at a pretty good school. What was she, what's she doing here now? And then I find this children's book. 
by another name. And I'm like, what? This is really interesting. Just like children's illustrated book. And then I find another letter from Kansas, from the Kansas school, and it had said something about her publishing. And I was like, what? And so I look up the book. She wrote this book, this children's book, illustrated it and everything. And then I see her student ID, and she looked like a completely different person. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is sad. This girl is not okay. Do you remember the name of the book? No, I don't. I tried so hard. I was thinking, I'm like, what was it? I wish I would have taken a picture. But you should find that. I will. I'll, I'll try and find it. I know it's on Amazon. So I'm seeing all this stuff. I'm seeing all of her school papers. And then there's these court documents. There's lawsuits. And then there's all these pill bottles. And every one of those is in a different name. Okay, weird. And then I, so I keep going through the little filing thing. And I find a bunch of drawings. And they're all voodoo drawings. There's some voodoo dolls. And then there's a bunch of letters. She looked like she was just drawing letters. And then there's this picture of what looks like our apartment. The living room and the kitchen kind of. And then on the bottom, there's a bunch of bones. And then at the top of the page, she's written the end. And I'm like, what? That's our apartment. What is going on? And I keep looking. I, keep in mind, I still have the hospital on the phone at this point, so I'm going fast, but I'm internalizing all of this. I'm giving them names and stuff, any phone numbers that I see. I didn't know that part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The picture. Yeah, the picture. The and picture. then and then I another <clears throat> envelope. There's an envelope. I open it, and it's just a bunch of cut-up pictures of naked women. Okay, interesting. So I put that back in the little thing. And at this point, I'm like, I need to get the freak out of here. I get out. I tell the hospital everything. I close the door, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So I tell Anna. I don't think we're safe here. And she's like, we got to get her out of here. I'm like, well, maybe she just won't come back. So that happens. And then the apartment starts to just feel a lot better without her there. I hate to say it, but <laughs> it was way better with her gone. And then one day, probably two weeks later, my biggest fear occurs. I come home from work. I open the door and there's Nicole on the couch. And she does not look well. Not even a little bit. And she looks at me and she looks angry. And I think she blamed me for her going to the hospital because after that, she was just never, never the same. And things were weird before. They got even worse after she got back. And so I'm like, oh, hey, how are you? So caught off guard. She's just sitting on the couch. Again, no TV on or anything. All her braids are out at this point. She just looks rough. And I'm like, are you doing okay? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, okay well i'm putting my groceries in the fridge well if you need anything let me know she doesn't say anything and just watches me walk into my room and i'm like no she's back immediately so yeah i text and i'm like dude she's back she's like no anyways probably another two weeks went by of me just avoiding her her playing really loud videos at night anna was getting really upset at her and then this one time i had my friend emma over emma lived across the hall And I'd been telling her about everything that was happening the whole time. So she was up to date on it. So she comes over and she was like straightening her hair in my bathroom or something. And Nicole walks out of her room. And I'm standing by Emma and I'm like, hey. And she just stands there and stares at us. And I'm like, um, hey. And she's like, get that bitch out of my house. (laughs) Pointing at Emma. And I'm like, what? And she's pointing at Emma and she's like, I want her out of my house. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. She's my friend. And Anna didn't know Anna was home. Anna comes out of her room. I have all this on video. Anna comes out of her room because Nicole is yelling. She's like, what's going on? And so Nicole starts saying to Anna, I want that bee out of my house. I don't like the way she looks at me. Just a bunch of stuff. So I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And I'm like, she's not going anywhere. She's my friend. And I have this thing where I call everyone dude, right? I've gotten better at as that as I've aged, but I'm talking to Nicole and I'm like, dude, she's my friend. She's, like, she's not going anywhere. And she's like, why do you always call me dude? She's like, do you think I'm a man? And I'm like, oh, no, sorry. It's just this thing I do. I call everyone, dude. I'll stop if it makes you uncomfortable. And she's like, I'm not a dude. And I was like, all right, my bad. But I'm pretty sure I was like, okay, sorry, dude. (laughs) Without even meaning to. Let's look at Maddie's stab wounds. That was the great reveal. She has seven stab wounds on her stomach. Yeah. And I'm like, sorry, dude. And she loses it. You two are always ganging up on me. Blah, 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 talking to me and Anna and she's like I live here you guys need to respect that I'm like okay so my friend's not going anywhere sorry you feel disrespected but I also feel disrespected when you walk into my room when I am not clothed and start telling me you want to hurt people 
at this point, Anna and I are just trying to de-escalate it because we know she's not in her right mind. It's just not even worth arguing. Anyway, my friend and I go into the living room. Anna's like, calm down. Calm down. And she's yelling. Finally, Anna just walks into her room and then she walks into hers. And I'm like, this is too much for me. It's too much. A week goes by and Nicole just won't speak to any of us. But it's just like evil eyeing all of us any moment she gets. Chin down, looking forward, just glaring at us. And I'm just trying to act normal, I guess. I look back and that was such a crazy way to live my life for a little bit there. She had another blow up the next day. I walk out of my room. It was a Saturday. <coughs> and I start cooking. And by this time, I'm getting annoyed and I'm angry. And she's staring at me like she does. She's evil eyeing me. And I look at her and I go, do you need something? And she goes, no. Why would you say that? Why did I say what? Why did you ask if I needed anything? And I was like, well, because you're looking at me and I didn't know if you needed something from me. She's like, no. And then she goes off about how I make her uncomfortable and why am I always wearing really short shorts around her and I'm always pointing to my crotch around her and I think she's a man. And I was like, hold on. What? First of all. Were you doing those things? I was not doing <laughs> any of those things. <laughs> She's like, you and your short shorts. She's like, you stuff. little skank with the short shorts pointing at your crotch. And I'm like, first of all, I haven't been wearing any super short shorts. I promise you, I'm, I am in no way insinuating to anything sexual around you. I swear on anything, I'm not pointing at my crotch. And so I flipped out. I flipped out. And I was like, stop lying. First of all, you know none of those things are true. Second of all, you have made me feel felt uncomfortable since the day you walked in here. So now I'm like, oh my gosh, she's sexualizing me. And now I'm scared because not only does she want to hurt somebody, but she's thinking about something about me. So like thinking where, that you're thinking. We exactly. think, yeah, and I'm just like, oh, this is so bad. This just is so delusions. bad. Yeah, Over. straight delusions. And okay, I know she's not well, but this is not okay. Anyway, I call the cops. I call the cops and I was so fed up. And so the cops come again. Because she's literally screaming in my face and she's talking about wanting to hurt people. She's like, I know we have knives in here. And I'm like, okay, police right now. Like, yeah. I, again, as anyone, like, I look back and I'm like, was I overreacting? And I'm like, absolutely not. I don't think and I, anyone given who the past. they're overreacting and tries to downplay it ends up dead. Yeah, so. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, given the past, I don't think I'm overreacting and I don't feel comfortable. So I'm going to call the police. So I call them. They come. Anna's there too. And she's like, yeah, call them immediately. But this time, Nicole puts up a fight and she won't go. And the police can't take her because the police can only take you if they arrest you unless you go Well, because she hadn't started swinging all you. Yeah, know, but you yeah just... she hadn't started swinging. I wasn't hurt yet, mm -hmm. right? And the legal system is that way. It is a lot more retroactive than preventative. So she wouldn't go. So they can arrest her. And I'm like, gosh, dang. <laughs> now she's pissed off even worse. So the cops leave and I leave. I can't be here. I leave my apartment. And I went to my mom's house for a couple days. So Anna and I the whole time are just texting the leasing office. This is not okay. Police were here again. And so they finally, finally are like, okay, okay, let us talk to her. And they talk to her. And I think as soon as they talked to her, they were like, mm, okay. So they move her to another apartment where she, I'm, now I'm like, you guys are losing money on her because they put her up by herself in a four bedroom apartment with nobody else in there but her. So they put her in that room and she gets all of her stuff. And I never see her again, thank goodness, until this is how the story wraps up. <laughs> the day I'm moving out, it's in August. It's like August 9th in Utah, and it's so hot, probably 95 degrees outside. And it's about 4 p.m., and I'm moving the last stuff out of my apartment. And I'm taking the last load down to my car. I go into the parking lot. I lift up my trunk door. I put it in. I shut the trunk. And in the middle of our apartment complex was a hot tub. We didn't have a pool, just a hot tub. I keep in mind, again, it's middle of August, 95 degrees outside. I shut my trunk. I look over to where the hot tub's at. And there's Nicole sitting fully clothed in the hot tub, staring at me, just sitting there. Long sleeve shirt, pants, in the hot tub, staring at me. I know we shouldn't laugh. Because someone is going through it. I know. Just the image of someone. It's terrifying, but also I just choose to laugh at it. Instead. Yeah. That it, okay. Yeah. Please. So that was how it ended. I never saw her again. And I I, I still think about her You weekly. think she's still at that apartment? I don't know. I don't know. I Let's truly don't know. Let's take a drive down to I know Provo. we should. We should go check it out. And just uh, knock around. We should go check it out. Oh, I forgot to add this. So also when I was going through all the documents in her room, I found out that she was never adopted, but she was in a foster home. So that's why they kicked her out at 18. Mm. 
and that was sad. So I'm like, dang, this girl probably had a really tough upbringing, and I'm really sorry, but I still never figured out who the Haitian lady she talked to on the phone was. Was if she, she ever Haitian? killed a baby? She was Haitian. Okay. Yes. Okay. I'm yes. like, was this Nicole just was random... Haitian? No. Okay. She was adopted from Haiti. Well, I don't know. I see. That's what I don't know. She told me she was adopted from Haiti, but I do know at some point I can confirm she was in an orphanage or foster home in Kansas. And so when she turned 18, obviously. Kind of aged out. Yeah. She did age out of the system. So yeah, really sad story, but also terrifying. And I cannot deny that something was going on. She practiced voodoo and she did tell me that she practiced voodoo. There were some voodoo style drawings and she was often speaking in terms that did not make sense. Hmm. So was the magnet the only thing that she had burned? Yeah. Well, that I know of. Yeah. Um, and then she never stabbed anyone. But, no, uh, not that I no know of. Her, right? Not that I know of. Which is a, yeah, a plus. Which is a plus. The whole time this is happening, are you thinking from the start this is mental illness? Or did you ever think in your mind, like, maybe she's possessed? Yeah. Well, the first time, at first I was like, okay, this is definitely mental illness. But I think it was when she came back from the hospital that I was like, this might be like possession maybe a mixture of both yeah Who knows? yeah no maybe a mixture of both but when she came back just the way she would just the way she started to move was i don't want to say less human but unnatural unnatural for sure the way her head would be positioned and cocked to the side or down and then just staring at the wall and staring at me and there were times when i literally looked at her and i was like something is happening there that's right. not natural jeez that's, that is terrifying, and I'm glad everyone got out safe. But retroactively, we can say, well, why didn't you I know. do I this know. or that, right? I don't know. I, dude, but I don't know. Did you think ever to be like, I should have someone come over here and bless this place or or anything like that? Yeah. No, Anna and I both talked about it. She was very religious growing up, but had since left religion. And so even – she's actually the one that brought it up. Sorry. So the fact that she brought it up. I don't think we ever did because Nicole ended up leaving a couple days after that conversation was had. Mm. But it, yeah, it was at that time where even Anna was like, hey, do you have a bishop or someone you could call to maybe come over and bless the house? Yeah. And, and I was and like, you yeah. yourself being religious, a lot of had to been going through your mind. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I prayed probably harder than I've ever prayed in my life. In those three Please months. don't let me die. Please don't let no, me die. No, for real. I can't believe I stayed. Honestly, I look back and I'm like, why did I stay? Everyone was always texting me. You even like, hey, are you okay? How are things doing? And I think in that moment. It's like a toxic relationship. No, for real. And I think in that moment, my way of surviving was just downplaying the situation. That's how I kept surviving. And also, I truly, I talked to Anna about this a little bit after. And I was like, I think we were both just a little too stubborn to leave too. Both of us were like, we are not leaving just because she no, like. No. We were like, she's not going to win this. Yeah. I'm no, like, I that that makes sense. It's it's looking back. Yeah, you're just like looking back. Run. Is, what? No, I know. Looking back, I should have gotten out. But I think also that wasn't a long term solution for me either. I was like, well, I'm gonna have to come back here eventually. Like, I don't know. Or not live here and pay rent here. Yeah, that was. I think that was my biggest kicker. I was so broke. I'm not gonna pay rent and not be here. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And I had Anna too. So I think if it would have just been me and her, no way. But because yeah. I had Anna, Anna also had a boyfriend that would, towards the end, started coming over and staying at night because of that. Correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't there a time where Anna and her boyfriend or someone and their boyfriend was out in the living room on the couch and it really Oh, yes. Nicole? My cousin. Yeah. Before my cousin moved out, her and her boyfriend were there. And yeah, she was super upset about it. She did not like when men were in the house, which, I mean, I can understand as a woman sometimes maybe but it was not a, i'm uncomfortable it was like i'm angry i hate you i hate you yeah she got upset at me too because i would have i mean it felt more comfortable when there were people there so i would also have some guy friends come over and she like got into called me a hoe and stuff because i have guys over all the time That's and i was like you know guy i know i was like oh my god <laughs> Dang. she well, said some very hopefully nicole has things. hopefully nicole's found the help she needs yeah. Um, or is being taken care of because that's, again, we want to think it's mental illness. Hopefully she can get help. But yeah. then if it's like, if it is a supernatural thing, yeah. it's like, oh, it's mental illness. But on top of that, she's possessed or maybe she's only, to, yeah. to say that she wrote a book, was in a well-respected yeah. school. Yeah. And then just to end up randomly in Utah. In Utah. 
And that's what I don't get how she ended up there. Does, did you ever meet her people who dropped her off? Did did you not ever see There was them? a woman one time that came to the door with her and brought her some groceries within the first week and then I never saw anyone again. Never talked to anyone. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm like, maybe that woman was someone from child services helping her because she was in the system and then left. But I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue, yeah. Yeah, I never saw that woman again. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? What do you think it was? (sighs) Looking back now. I think, here's what I think. I think it was... With with her history in mind, of like, oh, wow, she was doing this. Yeah, well, definitely some mental illness, but I think it does show she was very capable at one point in her life. Yeah. Very talented, very smart. I don't know. I think she might have been a little schizophrenic because they do say like early 20s is when that starts to kick in. But I do also believe that there was some other forces. Yeah. Well, and I don't know much about voodoo, but I know that people that do know about it are like, hey, it's no joke. That's why I think... You know, let me clarify. I think it was that first mental illness. But once I think she started getting more into the voodoo stuff when she moved into the apartment. And that's when it all started to go really south. And that's when I think some sort of supernatural something kicked in. I would love to find someone who knows a little bit more about voodoo. Me too. And be like, what in voodoo causes problems like this? Are there possessions in voodoo? There's the voodoo dolls, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's a thing. But then it's like, well, what... What are the voodoo beliefs on spirits and possessions and demons and all that? I would love to dive into that because it's like, who knows what she in that realm and religion yeah. and practice was getting into. Yeah, I don't know. You know, burning stuff, or, you know, drawing pictures. But again, yeah, I think that if it was mental illness alone at its core, it definitely wasn't helped by yeah. any voodoo or any spiritualism. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be said for any anything. religion, and, yeah, any belief any religion, system. I yeah. And I, I don't want to sound ignorant because I... I'm not a mental health professional. I hope I really hope she got the help she needed. And if whether it was that or spiritual or both. But yeah, that is that is crazy. It was. Well, thank you, Maddie, for telling your story. Anything else you want to add? No, I think that's about it. But I guess, yeah, just echoing. If you find yourself in a situation like that, police are a good. I mean, that's kind of your only solution at some time don't yeah don't be talked into thinking you're over yeah yeah i that's one thing i wish i would have done sooner is i think if i would have made a big deal out of it sooner i don't think it would have has gotten to the point that it did maybe i downplayed but there were a lot of very violent eruptions that were not violent i mean no one was hurt physically but like the potential was the there. potential was there zero to 100 really quick very violent yelling and name calling and yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's wild so trust your gut yeah. Don't don't downplay. You don't want anyone to get hurt. Take it. Take things seriously. Yeah. So, don't um, enable it. Yeah. That's all for now. If you think I've missed any questions or if there's something you're dying to ask Maddie about this story, be sure to message me on Instagram at unholy vibes pod or you can email me at unholy vibes pod at gmail dot com. So if you have any questions or follow up, I can always reach out to Maddie. I'm sure she's happy to fill in any gaps that there may be. Well, Maddie, thank you again. Thank you. I'm happy you came on. Of course. It's been a blast. Open to having you back again to tell your other stories. I would love to. But yeah, that's been Unholy Vibes. Thank you guys and have a good one. Bye.